the prophet of Ezekiel, chapter number 14. Ezekiel, like Jeremiah and Isaiah to some extent, deals a lot with Israel because she's turned her back on God. She sought after other gods, or other things became more important to her than God. So God raises up prophets to warn them and to woo them back to God. Just like today, God sends a message from His man. God will send revival meetings. God will stir in order for to woo us so we'll turn our eyes back upon Him. In Ezekiel, we find some instruction from God. He's speaking to his man, who then will speak to his people. But look in chapter 14, just going to read a couple verses here. I'm going to focus verse number 12. The word of the Lord came again to me, saying, Son of man, when the land sinneth against me by trespassing grievously... Then will I stretch out mine hand upon it, and will break the staff of bread thereof, and will send men upon it, and will cut off man and beast from it. Those, though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, were in it, they should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness, saith the Lord God. Let's pray. Father, we sure do bless you. Thank you again for this beautiful day that you blessed us with, we was able to enjoy. Lord, thank you that we can come this evening into the house of God. Lord, we can truly assemble and gather and separate ourselves from the world that we might come amongst your people. We might sing praise unto you and certainly hear from heaven through the word of God. Father, we thank you for these that are here tonight. We certainly pray, Lord, you would strengthen them and help them. No doubt many of them may be weary. They may have worked hard today or this week. They may have faced obstacles in their life this week. Lord, they have found themselves in the house of God, and I pray that, Lord, you would bless them abundantly, and I pray when they leave they'd have a greater appreciation for you and your choice benefits, and may they be re-energized, and may they certainly shine as lights in this dark world. Father, I pray for those that could not be here tonight that are sick. I pray for Brother Tony. I pray for Miss Sherry as she's recovering. pray for Miss Sonny who doesn't feel well tonight. I pray for Miss Brandy. I pray for her mother. Lord, you'd help her through her surgery. Lord, I pray that, Lord, you'd continue to help Brother Ed. It's good to see him. I'm glad he, he's showing some improvement. Continue to touch his body and touch his knee and help him. We pray for Miss Crystal the same, that, God, you would touch her and help her. And, God, I pray that, Lord, your great hand of grace would overshadow her. I pray for Brother J.D., you'd help him with his treatments, and God help him the same. I pray for Brother Bobby, you would strengthen him and help him. I do pray for others that are sick, others that uh, are providentially hindered and could not be here tonight. God, I pray for Miss Lexi, who has to have surgery on Friday. God, you would touch her and help her, guide the physicians, uh, use the nurse, is to minister unto her as she's in the hospital. And God, I certainly pray the surgery would be a success, would get, give her a much better quality of life, help our dear sister, Miss Lexi. Father, we pray for Brother Adrian, Miss Nancy, as Brother Adrian is uh, preaching tonight in North Carolina. Use him in an effective and a wonderful way. May he truly be a blessing to the church there. God, we certainly do pray to crowd this size. Uh, if there's somebody in our midst unsaved, lost without God, I pray tonight would be the night of their salvation. I pray for those that may be in our midst tonight 
that, Lord, physically they are fine, but spiritually they may be weary, they may be struggling, they, Lord, uh, uh, may need to move up, they may have grown a little cold. Uh, whatever the need of the heart is tonight, I pray the sweet Holy Ghost of God would speak to their hearts and do a work in their heart. God, may you sit down amongst us. God, may you do a work in us. Uh, and then, God, would you please do a work through us uh, that others may come to the saving knowledge of the Lord. Uh, bless now, use this unworthy vessel. Uh, help us now, we'll bless you for it. Uh, for it's in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus we ask it all. Uh, amen. Uh, amen. Uh, now, I want to draw your attention to what the Lord spoke to Ezekiel about. Uh, now, I want you to notice as a way of introduction the condition of society. Look, if you will, uh, he said in verse 13, Son of man, when the land sinneth against me uh, by trespassing grievously, uh, we find that he is talking about a future point, but also... Uh, ends up being very present in Ezekiel's life uh, when the society of Israel had sinned uh, against Almighty God grievously. Uh, can I say that every one of us on our best day, uh, we sin and fail the good grace of God. Uh, can I say that God does not tolerate sin? Uh, he does not accept sin. Uh, he does not uh, sweep sin under the carpet, uh, but God in His graciousness uh, and God in His mercy, uh, God in His long suffering, uh, He will uh, 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 give us a space of grace uh, that we can make things right with Him uh, so we can be in good standing with Him. Uh, but can I say, He's not talking about that in this context. Uh, He's talking about the land or the society of Israel uh, sinning grievously. Uh, when he talks about sinning grievously, uh, he's talking about crossing the line. Uh, he's talking about going to a point uh, 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 where it vexes Almighty God, uh, where His mercy uh, is now kindled into wrath, uh, where His grace is turned back uh, and judgment is about to fall. Uh, uh, he's talking about uh, a society that no longer recognizes him uh, as Almighty God. Uh, he's talking about a society uh, that has forgotten that he birthed them uh, in the wilderness. Uh, he is uh, talking about a society uh, that takes for granted his blessings uh, and his benefits uh, and gives him no credit for them. Uh, he's talking about a society uh, whose mindset uh, is evil continually uh, and no longer uh, fears Almighty God. Uh, can I say that sounds like the society we live in today. Uh, we live in a day and age uh, where people no longer recognize God as God, uh, where people mock those who do serve God. Uh, we live in a society uh, where people are not only comfortable in their sin, uh, they do grotesque sin, uh, and they thumb their nose up at Almighty God uh, and have the mindset, what are you going to do about it? Uh, well, neighbor, you just hang on. He is going to do something about it. Uh, nobody will ever get away with sin. Uh, and when it grieves God, uh, trust me, judgment is coming. Uh, we see, my dear friends, the condition of society. Notice, if you will, the condemnation of the sovereign. Look what God says he's going to do about it. Uh, he says, Then will I stretch out mine hand upon it, uh, and will break the staff of bread thereof, uh, and will send famine upon it, uh, and will cut off man and beast from it. Uh, can I say, uh, uh, no society that has ever uh, become reprobate in the eyes of God has ever continued to exist. Can I say, Nineveh, after the great revival we find in the Word of God in the book of Jonah, 70 years later, she is back doing worse than she did beforehand. And can I say, nobody really knows where Nineveh is today. God wiped her off the face of the earth. 
Can I mention Pompeii? Because they got some relics of it down there at the Cincinnati Museum. Pompeii. God sent a volcano uh, and God wiped Pompeii out uh, and there are just a few relics left. Can I say other societies have been utterly destroyed? Rome. Hmm? Rome used to rule the world. Mm, she don't anymore. Can I say Israel, God's chosen people, for 2,000 years wasn't even a nation. Mm -mm. Can I say God does not tolerate grievous sin in a society. And if you think America's going to get away with it, let me help you with something. I've read through the back of the book. Nowhere in prophecy do you find the United States of America. Nowhere in the end time prophecy do you find any mention of the United States of America. A country that 50 years ago was the greatest nation on the face of the earth. And today we're the laughing stock. Hmm. I didn't watch it. I've seen some clips of the State of the Union from the imposter as the President of the United States last week. I don't know what they had him on, but it was more than vitamins. And whatever it was made him very angry. Mm -mm. That was not a state of union. That was an embarrassment to the United States. And that's what America's become. And we're just getting started. Because the wrath of God hasn't even begun to befall this country. Mm -mm. I'm reminded what they said when Saul, King Saul died. They said, great was the fall thereof. Can I say that's what America's going to become? I'm certainly thankful for the rapture of the church. I'm thankful that God's going to take us out before the great tribulation period. But that don't mean we're going out before America falls. Mm. God help us. Got a little quiet right there. Notice, if you will, the condemnation of the sovereign. First of all, we find that he says, Then will I stretch out mine hand upon it. Look what he says first. And will break the staff of the bread thereof. When he's talking about breaking the staff of the bread, he's talking about those things they leaned on for survival. He said, I'm going to break everything that they're leaning on and trusting in. Can I say... The things that America's leaning on and trusting in will be broken too. He said, I'm going to take the staff of bread, those things they lean on for survival. He said, I'm going to break it. Then he says he'll send famine upon it. If the breaking of the staff of bread are those things that they leaned on for survival, famine are those things that they look to for future survival. He said, now, I'm not only going to destroy everything they eat, everything they trust in, I'm going to destroy their fields and send a famine where they won't even have anything in the future to eat. Mm -mm. But then he takes it a step farther. He says, and I'll cut off man and beast from it. That means they'll lose their own survival. He's going to take everything they trust in. He's going to take every hope of any future. And then he's going to take them. Sounds like a pretty stern judgment. Can I say the Bible says it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of an angry God? But then notice, if you will, the champion of the Old Testament saints. Look at verse 14. He said, Those these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, were in it. They should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness, saith the Lord God. Now he mentions Noah... Job and Daniel for reason. But he is referring in the context that these men, these great men, even though they were righteous, even though they are great examples, uh, 
These men could not save the wicked societies they lived in. He said they just delivered themselves. And can I say, we are to be a light to this society. We are trying to win this society. But there will come a point when God's going to take us out and bless us and He's going to deal with the society that will not turn to Him. But He uses these three men because Noah overcame the world. We find that Daniel overcame the flesh. He prayed three times a day regardless. And Job overcame the devil. And they're great examples to us because none of these men had a copy of the Word of God. None of these men had the Holy Ghost living inside of them, yet they overcame the world, the flesh, and the devil. And if they could do it by having just faith in God, how much more can we overcome by not only having faith, but having the Word and God living in us? You, we can overcome. I'm interested tonight in that phrase, the staff of the bread. I was just reading and came across that, and it struck me. And I want to preach for a few minutes tonight on the staff of bread. Now, that exact phrase is used five times in the Scriptures. Can I say the final time it is used is here in Ezekiel 14. And looking at the staff of bread, I understand that numerology of the Bible, five is always the number of grace. Thanks be unto God for the grace of God. We live in a wicked and perverse generation, but thank God there's still grace. Thank God He still will save sinners. Thank God He will still send revival. Thank God He will still bless His people. Uh, thank God... Uh, he will still take care of you and I, huh? What a blessing. But that staff of bread is mentioned five times. Now, can I say this? Uh, by the grace of God, we have a staff of bread to lean on. That's what he said he would break from them, what they were leaning on. But by the grace of God, we have a staff of bread to lean on. The Bible says in John 6, 32, Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. He was talking about manna, but then he says, uh, 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 God's given you something better than manna. He's given you the true bread from heaven. He goes on in verse 33, For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. Uh, he that cometh to me shall never hunger, uh, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Uh, can I say Jesus was telling them he was the living bread? Uh, uh, can I say uh, uh, he in John chapter number 1 also lets us know he was the Word, uh, and the Word became flesh. Uh, he became the living Word. Uh, can I say that uh, he, the living Word, uh, gave us the written Word, uh, and he, the living bread, uh, gave us the bread of life? Uh, and can I say, uh, uh, friends, we can truly lean uh, on the living Word Word and the bread of life. Uh, our staff of bread that God has given to you and I uh, is the Word of God. Uh, uh, what a privilege to have it tonight. Uh, uh, Brother Donald in his testimony said, uh, uh, in the midst of uh, being hit on every side, uh, still God gave him a verse. Uh, where'd that verse come from? Uh, the thing he can lean on. Uh, uh, the very staff of bread, the bread of life, uh, uh, the living Word of God. Uh, and we have a bread we can lean on. Uh, we have something that will help us in the midst of the darkness that we live in. Uh, we have something uh, uh, that will uh, uh, produce faith in our souls uh, that will propel us beyond any temptation that comes. Uh, with that in mind, uh, I want to preach on our staff of bread. Uh, can I say our staff of bread, uh, first of all, secured our salvation. Nobody ever got saved outside this. Huh? 
The Bible says in 1 Peter uh, 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 chapter 1, verse 23, being born again, not of corruptible seed, uh, but of incorruptible by the word of God, uh, which liveth and abideth forever. Uh, Romans 10, 17 says, So then faith cometh by hearing, uh, hearing by the word of God. Uh, uh, you never got faith to believe in God, uh, even though God's given every man, man a measure of faith. That faith wasn't activated uh, until you heard somebody tell you, about the word of God, about Jesus. Uh, hey, can I say, uh, it was the very word of God uh, 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 that uh, secured your salvation. Uh, again, Peter said, uh, we're born again, not of a corruptible seed, but of an incorruptible seed uh, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Uh, I, I, I had a, a, a heated little discussion with somebody not long ago uh, who tried to say the corruptible seed was dealing with our flesh. Uh, uh, no, corruptible seed is a false uh, interpretation of the Bible. Uh, but it, God gave us an incorruptible seed, uh, one that will produce faith, uh, one that will change your life, uh, one you can lean on, uh, one that will propel you, uh, one that will help you. Uh, what a blessing. It secured my salvation. Uh, say, how do you know you're going to heaven? Because the Bible told me so. Uh, uh, these things have I written that you may know that you have eternal life. Uh, hey, uh, my face not in the preacher. Uh, my face not in the church house. Uh, my face not in anybody else. Uh, my faith is in Jesus based on what he said. Uh, hey, uh, when heaven and earth is passed away, uh, I'll still stand on the promises God gave us. Uh, hey, uh, you can trust God's word uh, and it secured my salvation. Uh, I'm going to heaven not because I'm a Baptist, uh, but because God said I could. Hallelujah. And I just believed to God. Uh, what a blessing to have a staff of bread you can lean on that will secure your salvation. Let me help you with this. A lot of people, they'll be in a revival meeting, a camp meeting, some kind of high meeting, and boy, it gets high. Everybody's excited. Uh, and they'll base their whole experience of salvation on how they felt that night. I want to tell you something. Your feelings change. There are days I don't feel too good. That don't mean I'm not saved. Uh, I'm saved forevermore because I've been sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. My salvation is not based on my feelings. But can I say being saved makes me feel pretty good. Uh, but my feelings didn't save me. The baptismal pool didn't save me. Church membership didn't save me. Shaking a preacher's hand or signing a card didn't save me. Uh, going to church didn't save me. Uh, what saved you, preacher? Uh, I heard the word of God preached and I believed on the Lord Jesus Christ uh, based on what God said. Uh, and it's impossible for God to lie. Uh, and because I put my faith in the Lord uh, and what he said, uh, I'm secure in that. Hallelujah. Huh? Amen. I'm thankful I got a book I can lean on. Uh, can I say, all the modern translations, they're not even fit to be toilet paper. And you're welcome. Uh, I hadn't said that in a while. I thought I'd say it. huh? you got to understand, I'm not going to get into it. i got a lot to preach on tonight. But can I say this? Every translation other than that King James Bible, it came from a corrupted text. There were two wicked men named Wilcott and Hort that made up their own translation of the Bible and they took their translation from the Vaticanus text. Do you know what church is in the, where the Vatican is? See, the Catholic Church went in there and found things they didn't like. They just took them out. And they based their translation on that text. And it's missing things. Uh, uh, some of these modern Bibles are missing half of a chapter. Many of them are missing uh, part of the Bible. And the Bible talks about taking and adding to the Word of God. Are you listening? Uh, the King James Bible is the Bible for English-speaking people. Uh, and can I say, uh, it's the only translation for English-speaking people that came from the Texas Receptus, uh, the Greek text, which means the received text, which is the one 
that the apostles pinned it down in. Uh, it was the southern Greek. Uh, it was the everyday common man's language. Uh, aren't you glad, number one, God's interested in everyday ordinary men? Uh, and aren't you glad he's in the south? Hallelujah. Anyway, that didn't cost you, huh? I'm glad I got a book I can trust in. I've done a lot of study on why the King James Bible is the Word of God. And I'm just glad I got one I can lean on. Uh, and it amazes me every time they come out with a new version, all they do is try to attack this one. How come they never attack the one they're trying to replace? And by the way, this is the only one that don't have a copyright. You know why they come out with them about every year? Because they're making money on them, huh? You can, you can print this thing, print it, print it, print it. Nobody's making money on it. doesn't have a copyright, huh? Thank God we got a staff of bread that secures our salvation. But can I say this? Also alluding to Brother Donald's testimony, we got a staff of bread that soothes us in troublesome times. The Bible says in Psalm 119, verse 50, This is my comfort in my affliction, for thy word hath quickened me, or made me alive, brought my spirit back within me. He said, uh, 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 in my affliction, it was the word of God that brought life back to me. Huh? He also, in, in, in Psalm 23, we know the 23rd Psalm, uh, 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 but that fourth verse, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thank the Lord for the staff of the word of God. Huh? Our staff of bread secures our salvation. It soothes us in troublesome times. I don't know how many times I feel like I got the weight of the world on you. And all of a sudden, God will bring a verse back to your mind. Or else you'll get in the Bible and God will show you something that just lifts your spirit. Oh, you're still facing whatever you're facing. But now you're facing it with comfort in your soul. Now, I've heard Miss Janet testify a million times, if you've got peace, you can get through it. Huh? And can I tell you, the Prince of Peace gave us a book that'll give us help. It'll soothe us in troublesome times. Can I say our staff of bread? It supports us in weakness. I'm looking around. I don't see any red capes. I don't see any big yellow S's on anybody's chest. Uh... We like to come in and act like we have no problems. But I want to tell you something. Everybody's got problems. Everybody faces something somewhere along the line. And can I say, you're not always on the mountaintop. And sometimes you even get weak. Can I say, the Apostle Paul said, when I'm weak, then am I strong. What was he saying? He said, I learned when I can't go. There's one who'll pick me up and go for me. Huh? Can I say it supports us in weakness? Job 4.4 4 said, Thy words have upholden him that was falling, and thou hast strengthened the feeble needs. Psalms 119.116 says, Uphold me according to thy word, that I may live, and let me not be ashamed of my hope. What will help support us in our weakness? What will hold us up? Our staff of bread, the Word of God, it'll hold us when nothing else will. It'll sustain us when nothing else will. It'll support us when everything around us is falling apart. Thank the Lord for our staff of bread. Can I say it not only supports us in our weakness, it strengthens us in our weariness. Sometimes we're not weak, we're just weary. Do you ever just get tired? Hmm? Just tired. Do you ever just get not physically tired, but just tired of what you're having to face? Hmm? Yeah. Do you ever get tired of knuckleheads? Hmm? Must be a full moon on the horizon or something. I've seen a bunch of crazy people the last three days. Huh? I'm not even talking about the colonel. I'm talking about crazy people, huh? Sometimes you just get tired, you get weary. And even though the Bible says not to be weary in well-doing, sometimes we can get that way. What a help us, preacher, our staff of bread. 
it strengthens us in our weariness. Psalms 119, verse 28, My soul melteth for heaviness. Strengthen thou me according to thy word. I love Psalm 119, even though it's the longest chapter in the Bible. I love it because every verse deals with the word of God and the precepts of the word of God. But you know what that psalmist said? He said, hey, when my soul melteth for heaviness, strengthen thou me according to thy word. And can I say that staff of bread can strengthen you when nothing else can. Thanks be unto God when I'm weary and when I get to where I don't think I can go on, I can get in here and find out Jesus went the extra mile. And the Spirit of God lives in me. I can go another mile too. I'm thankful for the staff of bread. Can I say this? The staff of bread speaks peace to us in our storms. Psalms 85, 8, I will hear what the God, the Lord, will speak, for he will speak peace unto his people and to his saints, but let them not turn again to folly. Can I say, in the midst of your storms, the word of God will speak peace to you. Can I say, our staff of bread will shield us. Psalms 91, 4, He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. Can I say the word of God shields us? It shall be our shield and our buckler. What does that mean, Brother Tommy? A buckler means he'll not only be our shield, he'll be our shield all the way around us. Hmm? Uh, what does that truth? Do you know why the da devil tacks so hard against the Bible? Because he knows the Bible's what will shield you in in the things of God. The Bible will be what protects you and sustains you. Hmm? You know why people get mad at the Bible? Because it's truth. And sometimes the truth hurts. And can I say this? If the truth is in you, the truth will not offend you. Hmm? Right? People get offended at the truth when they've denied it. But when it's in you, it won't offend you. Listen, I've sat under hard preaching. I'm talking about mean preaching. Huh? I'm talking about mean preaching. I'm talking about get in your face and call you by name mean preaching. I'm talking about Brother Clint, they'll preach on the things you hadn't even thought about. And they make you feel like you did it. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking mean preach. I'm talking mean, hateful, not good, sweet spirit. I'm talking about junkyard dog mean preaching. Didn't offend me. Why? Because the Word of God's in me. I have sat and heard legal preaching. Stuff that isn't even Bible. Didn't offend me, because I know what the Bible says. That doesn't mean I agreed with him. Also didn't mean if they asked me what I thought about it, I didn't tell them. But it didn't offend me. Why? Because I know the truth. Hmm? Now, I don't like false preaching. There are some of them television channels I cannot watch. I cannot watch it because I know there are people who are hearing false truth and are embracing it, and it upsets me. And it's better for me not to be upset. You know, I don't want to take two Nexiums today because I've got an ulcer watching that junk. You know what I'm saying? There's just some things I choose not to be a part of. Not because I don't know the Bible. It's because I do know the Bible. And God help people that are caught up in that. There are good people sitting there who are being told lies and they don't know the difference. And that bothers me. And that also propels me to want to make certain we try and tell everybody we can the truth. Uh, but can I say, our staff of bread will shield us. It will shield you from false doctrine. 
Can I say, I remember I was probably 13, and we was at a singing, and a preacher got up, and he said something. I looked at my mama. I said, that's not the Bible. Now, I hadn't read that that I know of. Say, how do you know that wasn't the Bible? Because the one who wrote the Bible lives in me. And he shields me. Hmm. Say, what happened? My mama looked it up and said, you're right, that ain't the Bible. Uh, my mama always thought too much of me anyway. Ask my Aunt Lynn. Hmm. Uh, but can I say the Bible will shield us. Our bread of staff of bread will also, it's a sword that will defend us. Hebrews 4.12 was one of my granddaddy's favorite verses. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and the marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. What a blessing to have the Bible. Hmm. Can I say, you don't ever have to argue with people. You don't ever have to force yourself on people. All you got to do is quote the Bible. This thing will cut people a whole lot more than anything you can ever do to them. Huh? Just tell them what the Bible says. Boy, they don't like it. They don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear what the Bible says because it cuts both ways. It's a two-edged sword. But it even discerns the intents of the heart. Can I say this tonight? You don't even know what's in your own heart. The heart is deceitfully wicked. Huh? But can I say that Bible knows what's in the heart? And that Bible's able to cut even down there to where the heart is. And that, that Bible can deal with folks in ways we can't deal with folks. But it also is our defense. Listen, God never told us to defend Him. But when it comes to what we believe, all we got to do is quote the Bible. Huh? Hmm? You know why the... I'm going to be nice tonight. The alternative false rainbow crowd got so upset at the Creation Museum. Can I say they didn't get upset? We go in and you can see where uh, in the Grand Canyon you find dirt from everywhere in the world and the only explanation for that is a worldwide flood. That didn't what upset them. It didn't upset them that there's a picture of Lucy, the missing link, and you can't make a link between Lucy and man, but, you know, then you have the truth where man came from. That didn't upset them. You know what upset them is the truth that marriage is between a man and a woman. That's what upset them. That God made man and he made woman. And that is marriage in the sight of God when they come together. They didn't like that. Hmm? Huh? Why? Because they don't have any sense about Lucy anyway. And they didn't know anything about a worldwide flood anyway. But the truth of God made man and male and female. And when two females can't make male and female. And two males can't make male and female. Huh? Huh? And that, the truth of that, is what offended them. Hmm? Truth hurts. Huh? We don't have to defend our positions. All we got to do is tell the truth. Mankind shall not lay with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. That's the book. Now they'll say, I'm a homophobe. No, I'm not. I don't even know what a homophobe is, and I'm certainly not afraid of a homo. All I know is mankind shall not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. Hmm? Matter of fact, I think it takes more of a man to stand up and say that than it does to be whatever a homophobe is. Huh? You say you're a misogynist. I do not give massages, no. Say, you're a bigot. No. 
I'm a Bible believer, and if God said it, that settles it, and I don't care about what anything else says. And you can label me, you can title me, you can do whatever you want to, but by at the end of the day, uh, I'm going to thank God for His goodness. Uh, I'm going to hold to that sweet woman right there, and I could care less what they thought. Because when the trumpet sounds, I'm going home. And when the Lord says this thing's totally done after the millennial reign of Christ, they're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ, or before the great white throne judgment, and they'll know we were right. They can repent and get right now, or they'll repent before God, and it's too late. Hmm? Huh? And uh, I don't even know what to say about the furry crowd. Here's what I'm going to say about them. Stupid. Somebody needs to jack slap them back into reality. And where's my buddy Owen? Shouldn't have taken it down. Good. He filmed somebody with a tail on in class. Said, what in the world is that? I'll tell you what that is. Freak. That's what that is. Said he could get in trouble for that. I'll stand with him. Huh? 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 You say, well, I can act like I whatever I want to. Yeah, you can, and then I can tell you you're stupid. Amen. The same right that tells you you can act whatever it gives me the right to tell you what you are. Amen. Well, that was nowhere in my notes, but I enjoyed it. <laughs> uh, takes a sword, this staff of bread we lean on it'll defend us I don't need to worry about anything else by the way in case you're new to the church I need to make copies and put them out on our bylaws but we've added to the bylaws over there I guess we need to put a furry vision in the bylaws but listen anybody that presents themselves to be a member of our church they have to present themselves first of all they got to be saved uh, they got to be scripturally baptized. But if they present themselves for membership, they have to present themselves in the gender they were born as. We got that provision in there. We also got in there that no member of our church can practice uh, be, be a practicing homosexual. Got that in our, our bylaws. We got a lot of things in our bylaws. But our attorney, when we uh, was building this, he looked at our bylaws. He said, there's not a judge in the land that will go against your bylaws. So, Brother Doug, why you get up and say what? Because I'm not afraid. First of all, I got the Bible. Second of all, we got the law. Third of all, they're freaks. I'm not afraid. Right. Uh, but we probably should put something in there. Nobody can join if they got a tail or ears attached to them that did not come from the Lord because we aren't a bunch of monkeys running around with tails huh that's the dumbest thing I ever heard of huh you know we're making fun of but these kids got to deal with it huh I, I don't want to tell you in mixed company what we'd have done if somebody come in with the dog collar and said that uh, they was going to eat from a bowl we'd make sure they ate the bowl huh I mean that's that's goofy Where's the parents? Huh? There sits my boy. This is my. Ask them what would happen. They come home and say, Dad, I'm going to identify as a cat. <laughs> Just ask them. Knowing how much I hate cats. <laughs> oh. Last point, I'll get out of this thing. There's a staff of bread that we can lean on that has stood the test of time. 1 Peter 1 23 again I want to quote this verse being born again not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible by the word of God which liveth and abideth forever this book's alive because Jesus is alive and this book abideth forever you can stand on it friend it stood the test of time Psalms 119 verse 89 forever O Lord thy word is settled in heaven and I say 
This book has stood every attack that's ever come against it. Uh, in Genesis 3, the devil started attacking the Word of God. And he, or Genesis 2, and he's been attacking it ever since. And all this book does is just once again, over and over and over, prove it's the Word of God. It stood the test of time. Hmm? And if it stood the test of time, it'll help you stand. And it'll stand with you. Hmm? Paul wrote, having done all to stand, stand therefore. How can I stand? Because I got that. I have a foundation steadfast and short, anchored within the veil. I have a staff of bread that's rock solid. And I thank God for our rock that we stand upon. Now let me help you something. What they're trusting in and leaning on is shifting sand. And God is about as grievously sinned with this country and this world as he's going to get. It's not going to be long. He's going to knock what they're leaning on out from underneath them. He's going to send a famine. Huh? Listen, why do you think there... Do you know there are laws trying to make it illegal for you to eat food you grow? That is, it's, it's happening all over this country. Ask Brother Jim, he knows what I'm talking about. They're saying you've got to have engineered meat and vegetables. Why? Because they're pumping them full of junk. They don't want you eating farm fresh eggs. They don't want you eating food that you grow in a garden. They don't want you raising a cow, raising a hog, and eating your own food. They're trying to put farmers out of business. Why? Because they're wanting to control the population. I heard, it, I heard somebody in the news say this today. The only way you can control population is control their food supply. And if people don't have water to drink or food to eat, they'll do anything anybody says to have it. If they took a jab, by the way, everything I said during 2020, and you all thought I was crazy, it's all come to pass. It's all proven. And can I say, if people would bend over to take a jab because they're afraid of catching a cold, what do you think they're going to do when they can't eat? When the grocery store shelves are empty and Bill Gates buying up all the farmland says, here, I got this engineered meat. It don't look like meat, but it'll help you. You'll eat it. Huh? You say, preacher, there's no way. Hey, what about that plane crash when people died in it and they was up there on a mountain for months? They was eating people. If you'll eat people, you'll eat whatever Bill Gates puts in front of you. Huh? I'm just trying to help you. Everything they're trusting in is a lie. The devil is about ready to usher in the Antichrist. He's setting everything in order. Hmm? Why do you think there's a war going on in Israel right now? And why is it so many countries are back in the terrorist? Because every nation's going to turn against Israel. I'm telling you, things winding down. You better be standing on the, the staff that won't break. And you better anchor it to your soul. What a blessing. We leave here tonight. You ought to be thankful you got the Word of God. You ought to be thankful you're in the church that still preaches the Word of God. You ought to be thankful the Word of God's in you. And you ought to be thankful that every day you can eat from a portion of the table set by God. Maybe tonight you need to come thank the Lord for your Bible. Maybe tonight you need to come pray about somebody you know that's not in church. Say, God, give me the very thing that's going to take to show them they need the Lord. Maybe tonight the Lord spoke to you about something else. Maybe you need to come pray about it. Whatever your need is, the Bible's got the answer. Amen. Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. God spoke to your heart. The altar's open. Maybe you need to go to somebody and tell them they're blessing. I don't know. Uh, the folks are coming. They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the Bible.
Lord, without the Bible, we may be doing more foolish things than some of these people out here are doing. Lord, I'm thankful. I heard the Bible. Lord, I trusted in Christ. Now, Lord, help people that are deceived. Help people that are being told false truths. Help people that, Lord, are blind to the things of God. Help us, Lord, to shine as lights and help us to share the gospel before it's everlasting too late that by all means we may win some to Christ. Bless now in this invitation. Speak to hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.